Aloha and welcome to another episode of Security Matters. Today, the SEA Rise Committee will be taking over yet another episode from Andrew Lanning. And we are excited to bring you an episode today about the digital revolution as brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic. Pulling back the curtain a little bit, in some of our pre-discussions and planning for this episode, that was one of the major themes that we had discussed. We initially came to the, this episode with kind of a blank canvas around COVID-19 and some of the business impacts across different sectors of the security industry. And one of the commonalities that we found was this digital revolution that is not only just impacting the security industry, but really businesses around the world. So we will be excited to dive into that issue a little bit deeper today, especially considering that we are now reaching the year anniversary into the pandemic as it's really started to impact us here in the States. It was kind of mid-March where the world suddenly started to shift and change and we were forced to all adapt into this new world of global and digital participation. So um, really, Excited for what we have for you guys today and uh, bringing a great episode of content around the digital revolution. Yeah, Mark is right. No matter what industry you are in, whether it be physical security, cybersecurity, or any other industry segment, be sure to pivot to maintain business continuity. We've got a great show for you guys this week, and I'm excited to introduce our guest this week. With us, we have John Harris from Guidepost Solutions and Sasha Weiskiel with Salesforce. I'm extremely excited to hear a little more from them and see how their organizations or their viewpoints have had to pivot over the last year. Awesome. Thank you, Matt. So John and Stasha, to kind of roll things off today, um, could you give us a little bit of background, kind of tell us what your roles are and how did COVID-19 initially impact the way your organizations did business? And how do you think that that will change the way that you will do business, not only in 2021, but moving forward. And we'll go ahead and start with Stasha. Hey, great. And, and first, thanks very much for having me. So uh, yeah, Stasha Weissy with Salesforce. I am uh, the head of our resilience program, which is not only crisis and incident management. Um, I oversee the global operations centers, which a lot of you are probably very familiar with. That's that nice meld of Intel and, and hardware. Um, I also oversee the business continuity program, which as you can imagine, we hit the big red button on in January of uh, 2020. And then I also oversee risk as it pertains to global safety and security. So when you start looking at what COVID um, offered us in the uh, uh, last year, not only was I able to spin up our crisis teams and really show their worth to the company, but we sent 50,000 people home uh, basically overnight. As you mentioned, uh, um, in March, we kind of uh, pretty much closed down the United States, uh, LATAM, as well as EMEA, all overnight. So it was an interesting time for us, especially when you look at global operation centers, because we sent them home too. It's uh, not really fair to uh, prioritize somebody's health over another person's health. So. When we hit the button, we sent our agents home. We um, tricked out their home environments so that they could work as impactfully and um, as efficiently as possible. And we didn't see a drop in their service level agreements um, to our employees, uh, nor did we, of course, uh, knock wood, still uh, not see uh, any significant impact to our customers. Uh, our continuity plans really uh, helped us out there, of course. But um, I think to your point um, made, the, the, the new norm or the, the new better, uh, the lessons we learned about, uh, certainly with the Go Center, you don't have to be sitting next to each other to be uh, colleagues. You don't have to be sitting next to each other to be impactful and effective. And uh, it's really going to um, lead us to, to sort of reevaluate even our hiring. Uh, if we are a work from anywhere, that we have a legal entity, uh, work from anywhere company, what does that really mean? It means I don't have to look just in the Bay Area for the talent because uh, it can be a little expensive out here and maybe somebody uh, elsewhere is the right person. It is their dream job. And now I might have a little bit more freedom to, to um, be a lot more democratic about the way I look and the way I hire. So uh, yeah, we had some really interesting lessons learned and um, certainly uh, throw to John, but uh, uh, more to come on, on our work from anywhere and, and the trends I'm certainly seeing in my world. Yeah, thank you. And, and uh, you know, similarly, you, you mentioned something, Sasha, that um, 
that uh, it, that I share with you, and, and that's we got involved in um, COVID response in January. So while the U.S. response uh, and emergence of that started on March 11th, um, I actually was at a client site for a meeting in the morning and um, to meet with the CEO that later that morning and, and the, the CSO came in and said, hey, we're shutting it down. We're sending everybody home. Um, you can go back to your home hotel room. <laughs> so, uh, and that was the beginning. I flew to Chicago the next day to, to spend uh, one day in our beautiful new uh, office that we had just opened in two crew towers. And then the next day, uh, little did we know that we would never be back in there, you know, for the next year, <laughs> flew back to Minneapolis and, uh, and, and that, and then everything kind of shut down. But I first was supporting clients. Um, one client in particular called me, uh, right after Christmas, uh, early new year, kind of leading up to, to new, uh, um, to the, to the Chinese New Year, where they're like, hey, we're, we're hearing some noise in our supply chain. There's something going on um, above and beyond the regular uh, uh, disruptions that we, the, the shutdowns that happen around New Year. Can you look into it for us? So, so Guidepost Solutions is a global security technology and compliance monitoring organization. Uh, you know, we have clients all over the globe. My role, I'm Director of Enterprise Solutions. So I work with large global organizations to provide uh, uh, in a suite of services, physical security, um, uh, investigations, research, you know, security operations as a service, the whole bit. So they're like, can you look into this for us? We started looking into it. The factories were getting shut down and, and, and we were working with them to identify through our different intelligence channels how they were going to get their factories back open to deal with this thing coming out of Wuhan. So, so that was January 15th. Um, and then we're, we're working with them on that, building up that reopening strategy for their China-based locations. And then all of a sudden, EU, <laughs> all of a sudden, <laughs> US, and then LATAM. And so we were uh, heavily involved with helping companies figure out how to reopen and build that, that plan, um, mostly manufacturing organizations and, and places that were deemed essential. So how do you do that when you can't go there? So I think that was our, our biggest, um, uh, impact that we felt right away is how do we virtualize our, our offering? So typically, a uh, client says, hey, come look at our facility, walk it down, tell us what's wrong, look at our policies, meet with us. Well, now, now that's very limited, right? So, so we had to strategize around how we deploy our services and capabilities uh, in a virtual manner. We also got very educated really quickly on, um, on uh, the impacts of uh, the coronavirus to our clients and to municipalities that we work with and how we could help them manage through the impact of what it meant for them. So were they gonna close down? Then how are they gonna monitor themselves in, in kind of a blackout mode where no one's in the building and, and you can't have security officers there because no one can be in there, so how do you monitor that? Or if you're critical infrastructure, if you're manufacturing, how are you gonna stay going? What screening should you be used? So we're helping weed out the vaporware technology and say, no, that, that you know, thermal screening isn't going to give you the value that you need deviate from there. Right? So we're, we're that trusted partner and advisor, but we can't do that unless we understand and we're knowledgeable. So the month of March was, was spent educating ourselves and becoming knowledgeable on um, how we could best support um, our, our clients and then also us, like we, we couldn't go to our offices anymore. We couldn't have, you know, I work remotely and in, in, I'm connected to Chicago, but I work in Minneapolis. So for me, it was just like, I'm not going to be traveling now. So nothing really changed. But we have 200 other employees where, you know, we have a CAD drawing group in Dallas, which now had to figure out how to do design work, which is a heavy computing capability from home. So how do we do all that and how do we manage through it? So, um, you know, kind of similarly to what Sasha said, but, uh, you know, a different side of the industry where we were supporting organizations like Sasha, we were helping them. How do we virtualize our entire SOC? How do we take that and do it at home um, with, you know, proper cybersecurity hygiene? How do we make sure that we're you know, not putting our people or our assets in, uh, harm's way because we're no longer inside the infrastructure of the facility connecting to the networks that way. So it was a 
you know, real quick learning curve right out of the shoot. And luckily, we got a jump on it because of our engagement with uh, with the global customers back in January. Uh, but it was it was definitely an adventure. And and you know, through the summer, and and we're continuing. You know, now we're talking about post COVID reopening support as. Uh, we talked about vaccinations before we started recording here. Uh, you know, that's pre presenting a whole nother angle and opportunity where we're having to support people with. Uh, so, you know, for us, um, we I think we reacted quickly, and then we looked across our entire portfolio of business and 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 really looked at what does this mean for us? How do we respond? And most importantly, how do we support our clients? Yeah, John, I think that that's really interesting. The pivoting that uh, your company was able to do, and certainly Salesforce, we got a product out the door within six weeks, right? Um, that was made by people working from home for the first time. Um, so I thought that was really interesting. And I think one of the things that um, I really wanna sort of touch on and, and that we touched on in our conversation uh, the other day is, is the pivoting that we are doing in our industry. If all of a sudden my go centers are not spending 80% of their time responding to alarms and we're never going to go back to the same pattern, right? People are not going to go to the office in the same uh, amounts. We're, we're redesigning um, our work from anywhere, as I mentioned. Uh, how do we now pivot their own uh, day-to-day -day responsibilities? How do we make what is a strength or a passion of theirs into their superpower? Right, because now they have the luxury of diving into training programs, really being a lot more proactive, less reactive. And I think it's going to give um, our industry a very interesting change. And, and again, a pivot from eyes on cameras, hit a button, do a response to how are we predicting what is coming? How are we really looking at the cybersecurity issues? Um, certainly protests uh, more and more, whether it's against a particular company or, or what we uh, are seeing just uh, geopolitically speaking, certainly here in the United States, and how do we continuously now protect our employees when instead of having, say, 160 offices, we have 50,000 offices, right? And so how do we continue to service um, our employees at the same level with them working really literally uh, from anywhere we have a presence. Um, so, uh, so I think it's a challenge for us to challenge our own employees, our own go center agents to help us find what that next uh, uh, level of attention and level of service is going to be because we're never going to go back to what it used to be like, right? It's a new better. Let's, let's bring the lessons we've learned forward and let's like just kill it and stop being just fire people not no offense to the fire people but instead of you know putting out the fires right let's identify the risk and mitigate it before the fire starts Sasha, i think you know you raised a, a, an excellent point and, and your universe of responsibility and accountability in your company is, you, is uniquely placed to see the value of the last nine months i i, I think 2020 is the is the worst planned tabletop exercise maybe best plan, depending on how you look at it. I mean, I remember sitting back at like, you know, security events over the years and you'd be doing tabletops. You're like, all right, it's a fire. Then an active assailant. And then, you know, fire and brimstone. People are like, oh, that would never happen. What if I told you there would be a pandemic and massive social unrest and, uh, you know, unbelievable climate activity where it shuts down the grid? Like, like what, who took this madness and shoved it all into one single year? Uh, however, what that did to the security industry was put us on the forefront of global attention. And you can see the market responding. Companies are investing in security. Security companies are being invested in by venture capitalists, by, by other uh, investment firms, because people see, wow, there was a huge immense value here. And everything we used to do was so manual look at the opportunity of automation. And so to double tap on something Sasha talked about, if, if we can look at how those activities that we, were, that we were forced to do over the last year compounded each other. So now I need to look at uh, you know, Intel around where our social unrest, act so I live in Minneapolis, outside Minneapolis, this week's gonna be a very interesting week, or this month or forward of everything that's going on. 
but also there's the opportunity for spark ups to happen in all types of other places. No, pet, no matter what side of the spectrum you're on, um, there's stuff that you can get upset about. So if I'm not having to pay attention to door forced alarms, and I can pay attention to the stuff that actually has um, immediate and, and kind of uh, verifiable impact on my population. And with now a workforce, like you said, I think it was beautifully put, 50,000 uh, buildings that I'm protecting as opposed to 160, uh, you know, that you need that type of layered out approach where you're really filtering out the low value data so that you're only presenting to your operators or your analysts, or your decision makers, the stuff that matters or that requires their innovation or their uh, intervention or attention. And so we're seeing technology come to the forefront from adjacent um, uh, industries, you know, non-security industries saying, hey, I think I have a tool that can help fix you guys or help you fix your problem, not fix us. Um, instead of us taking, you know, hey, can I take my access control system and bend it towards a threat analysis system so that I can use it to help me with these other data puts. And then it ends up becoming this like manual process that you have to manage and adjust. So you know, I think about, you know, Sasha, your world where you have your folks who can now sit anywhere in the country or anywhere within, you know, proximity to a, to a you know, zip code that you guys think is permissible um, and give them a tool set to, to observe, to, to kind of hunt for threats and respond and escalate and aggregate um, and, and, and we're playing offense instead of defense. And that just raises our whole industry up to a higher level, a higher playing field. Um, and, and I think that's what's exciting for me. And um, you could never say that with the amount of uh, death and economic impact that coronavirus has had, that it's a positive thing. The net positive outcome of it for our industry is that um, escalation of innovation and, and pushing us forward. All those things were happening, like not a lot was invented brand new during coronavirus. What it does, what it did was just really move forward and faster and quicker. The, the adoption um, and acceptance of, you know, cloud-based systems and analytics and connected tools and taking IoT methodologies and pushing them into the physical security genre um, that maybe would have happened over time, but maybe that was a 10-year, you know, adaptation horizon with a much larger adoption chasm that was driven down exponentially because of this, this unfortunate incident. Yeah, John, I want to hop on that because um, that's exactly right. And it, you know, I've been doing this for more longer than I want to admit, but uh, really since 93 and having done boots on the ground stuff, uh, being deployed out to, to events to, to, to what I do now, um, it is almost sadly always true that our areas, our industry get the attention that we need only after something tragic has happened. Um, and if you are not considering how to use, again, not in a a disrespectful way, but if you're not considering how to use the visibility of your departments to ask, at least ask, I, I also won't get all the resources I think I need, that I really need, uh, but if you're not taking this as an opportunity to forward a, an amazing one year, three year, five year plan of, of where you're taking your program to the new better, um, then you're really losing an opportunity to be a leader in, in the industry and certainly in your um, company. And to John's point, you know, the acceleration is not going from zero to 60. It's sort of rocket ship. And you, you got to help drive that rocket. You got to get it up and get it out because uh, now is the time. And, and, and you don't want to be the last company uh, that can send your, your Go Center agents home. Uh, because that's going to be relevant to so many other situations as well. And just flex those muscles. Make sure that you're putting the policies, procedures in place. Make sure they have the right equipment. You know, whatever it is you need to do. Because, again, the working environment is forever changed. And if you're not changing with it, I had a conversation with a colleague who said, I can't wait to have my ghost center people back in because I believe they work better. I'm like, we didn't see that, you know, there was a learning curve. 100%, but we're not seeing a drop off in the services provided, right? So that to me is great. That means, again, we can work from anywhere. If I have to evacuate uh, my site, 
we already have the backup. We already know what we're doing. We already have the support um, built in. So it's just, you know, put your seatbelt on because uh, I think our industry is really changing, changing for the better, and we need to all be agile uh, and, and, and part of that ride, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like a lot of the technology that we were kind of forced to implement during coronavirus allowed our companies and you know, a lot of companies out there to, like you guys are saying, you know, be ahead of the curve. A lot of the companies were looking at, you know, new technology and they're like, all right, maybe in five, 10 years, as you guys mentioned, but, you know, this technology was used now to prevent COVID, but it can be used moving forward uh, for the, for the next, you know, five, 10, even more years. You know, some of the technology was like people counting or, you know, all these other uh, technologies that we, we came out with um, or already had, you know, and it was available, but we never really invested in it. And it, COVID kind of like forced companies to invest in it. So, um, so I wanted to, I wanted to ask the, next, the other question, Sasha, in the beginning, you mentioned about uh, kind of breaking the barrier for, uh, you know, the need for for employees to be located in the geographic region of the Bay Area, for instance. Um, you know, I think that's a really important thing. And I just wanted you to elaborate up on that a little more and, uh, you know, how Salesforce is, is uh, you know, going about that in 2021 and, and moving forward. Yeah, thanks very much. So um, as I said, we, we, we do have a bit of initiative called Work From Anywhere. Um, so uh, uh, that is being rolled out by um, our, our company uh, for this year. And, you know, we, we took a look, uh, we, we surveyed, we are a company that communicates all of the time and we try to be uh, very transparent. Um, and what we were hearing from uh, employees was, I'll go back in the office, but it's never gonna be five days a week. I'll go back to the office, but it's two days a week. And, um, you know, interestingly enough, I had had the conversation with somebody in my Singapore office who was moving back to the Seattle area. And and this was before this initiative really, you know, again, it's really not this year. This was last year. But he said, look, I thought I had to work in Seattle. I thought I was going to have to pay a huge amount of money for a small house with no backyard or, or, or what have you, because I didn't want to have a long commute and, and that I was going to sacrifice. Um, and what happened with COVID is he said, look, we bought something an hour and a half outside of the city. My child has a place to roam. We have, you know, space between homes and because I can commute twice a week, that hour and a half each way. I don't want to do it five days a week, right? So all of a sudden already the, the opportunities for people to have better work-life balance, better decisions that are going to make them happier, make them healthier, make them better employees in the long term, right? We're already sort of being done by, by people. And, and that's the initiative that we're looking at is, is how do we extend that sort of thing to all of our employees to the extent that they wish. Um, I may work from the office person. I like individually wrapped gummy bears, you know, whatever. Uh, and, and so I'll go in and, and, and that's, that's great. That works for me. It doesn't work for everyone. And I think that that becomes the most interesting thing is being able to allow employees to tailor their lives so that they can do the best work of their lives. I, I completely agree. And that goes back to this idea of the new better. First of all, I love that you said that. And really turning the idea of work-life balance into more of a work-life integration. Um, we slowly got to learn a little bit more about our coworkers as children were in the background of Zoom meetings and dogs and all these interruptions that in the past we would have thought unprofessional really became a, an integrated part, part of the, the new workforce for us. And I really loved the way that you said um, turning everyone's each individual strengths into their superpower, because I completely agree with you. Um, each individual's needs are different. Each individual's strengths are different. Some people might work really well two days in the office, three days from home, or even five days from the office, and a little bit of a mix of both. But I think that's one of the most fantastic things for the workers of this is that we win in terms of getting work and life more integrated into each other. Um, and going back to a point John said, I really loved how you said the offense versus defense idea. Um, the security industry historically, really for whatever reason, hasn't always been the most proactive. And the COVID-19 has really 
forced us to be more proactive, more on the cutting edge of technology. And we really had no other choice than to just jump in head first and, and get into it. Perfect, perfect. Oh, John, go ahead. No, I've just uh, to, to kind of close out with uh, on the people part, I think um, it, it really taking a step back and reimagining how the roles in security can be performed is 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 what it forced us to do. Uh, I, I work with a, a, a large recognizable organization that's based here in Minneapolis, and they 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 sent all their people home from their headquarters, even the security officers that manage access control. And, and, it, and it became a pilot project to see could they virtualize the check-in experience into their headquarters where they were doing, you know, where they would have one operator at home versus five or six operators that were usually at a lobby, virtualize the check-in process, still have some human contact over like video conference and somebody managing there and looking at, um, uh, access flows and and monitoring things, and granted, you had a much less uh, um, level of occupancy and entry, uh, but it was manageable. And so now, as they're reoccupying, they're taking that into consideration of how could we use these FTC, FTEs on higher level um, roles and responsibilities and stretch them into training programs and 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 you know use this as a career pathing exercise and then this this role they can take since we've automated more and virtualized some things out of the lobby using technology they can take on more activity and so we can we can we're not displacing the human resources and the human capital we're reallocating it and raising up the the uh the kind of threshold of output um and that what they kind of what they can learn and do and upskilling um, the the industry of, of that particular area. So I think you know that um, it, it's not just like a reallocation of all types of people being able to work from home, but also how do you uh, uh, re envision how how security practitioners can operate and do more virtually or more automated. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, everyone. I, I say this with complete sincerity and that I truly wish we had more time to discuss this. Your guys' thoughts were absolutely fantastic today. I feel like we've only scratched the surface on this whole topic. We could go for hours and hours, and it was an absolute treat to uh, hear you, Stasha and John, today. So really appreciate the time. Uh, before we close, just wanted to, uh, for all the RISE people out there uh, listening, wanted to give one last little reminder of the TIME Mentorship Program. Um, we are still looking for mentees for that program. Still a great choice to be connected to one of uh, a fantastic industry mentor and get connected in this great program with 12 monthly mentoring sessions. So uh, the link is down below and uh, will be provided as well. So uh, still time to get into that. And uh, with that, we close and say thank you everyone for tuning in today. Thanks very much for having us. Thank you, thanks for having us. Take care.